Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well today. Something occurred to me recently and that is that I have had these two machines sitting next to each other now for quite a long time and I've never done a comparison between the two. I appreciate the comparing the HCS2 or the Happy Japan Voyager to Happy Japan's flagship model, the HCU. It's a bit like comparing the VW Golf to the Touareg. That's unusual that I'm using cars as comparison because I don't actually drive. But the point I'm trying to make is, despite being by the same manufacturer, they are two quite different machines. But from my perspective, this is what levelling up a home business looks like. You start small and then you eventually work your way up to a bigger machine. And when I say small, I in no means mean that in a negative way. The Happy Japan Voyager is compact. And before we really get stuck in, I should point out that these two are now older models. There are newer versions of the machine now available for sale. The Happy Japan HCS2 is being succeeded by the HCS3. Major differences between this model and the newest model include, but are not limited to, a smaller bobbin casing, which is great for users embroidering onto tight spaces like pockets. It also has the benefit of a crosshair laser to allow for more accurate placement of logos and lining up designs on the embroidery machine. And the general appearance of the machine has also changed, with the greatest visual difference being they have replaced this uh, swing door uh, with a threading system that looks more like the one you see on the HCU. As for the HCU, they have now brought out the HCU2, which has notable upgrades again, the even smaller uh, bobbin casing, also, it has automatic thread tensioners, which means no more knobs like you see on this model. All of the tension settings are now accessed via the touchscreen. I am a little bit dubious about how that's going to work out, and I would one day love to see the machine in action. But back to the two embroidery machines we have in front of us today. The HCU, the machine by itself, weighs 99 kilograms. I think I read somewhere that with the stand that comes with it, it weighs about 150 kilograms, while the HCS2 only weighs 42 kilograms. While it is still an industrial machine, it is a very home business friendly machine. While with the HCU, even if I got Eddie Hall to carry the machine up the stairs, I'd probably immediately have to watch it plummet back down through the ground floor, through the hole it left in my ceiling. I'm exaggerating, but at the same time, I don't want to try it. So for me, it was better for the HCU to live on the ground floor. And although I appreciated the extra cardio running up and down the stairs between my office in the bedroom and here between the embroidery machines, it wasn't ideal and I did end up bringing all of my machines into one room. And now to start comparing the two machines, we're going to start from the bottom of the machines and work our way up. Starting with the bobbin casing, which I've already mentioned is smaller on the new models on both types of machines. On the HCS2, the bobbin casing is 5.5 centimeters across by 6.5 centimeters down compared to the HCU where the casing is 4.2 centimetres across by 4.7 centimetres down. And because of its smaller size, when you are changing the bobbin, you have to gently pull back the keeper to make it easier for you to remove the bobbin from the, from the machine. And this is just a fact of having a smaller bobbin case that allows you to have greater versatility on the garments and projects you can embroider on with the HCU. And again, they have further decreased this in size apparently, which I really love to see on the newer model, the HCU2. Too many letters is coming. I'll keep mentioning features that have been upgraded on the newer models, but I'll try not to delve into it too much because at the end of the day, this video is focusing on the two machines I have here with me today. And if you were to purchase older models or say secondhand machines off eBay uh, that are these models, then this is what you'd be getting. Next, we have the presser feet. And again, on the newer models, they have been improved. The biggest difference I think is on the HCS2, between the HCS2 and the HCS3, each needle now has an individual presser foot 
rather than just the one press of foot that the HCS2 has. Uh, the HCU does have an individual press of foot on every needle. The HCU is also a more recent machine compared to the HCS2, which means this machine does have the benefit of the more streamlined press of foot shape. Because the press of feet are that much smaller, it means that the needle can get closer to the edges of uh, the embroidery hoop and the sewing field without the needle or the foot crashing into the edges of the embroidery hoop. While the presser foot on the HCS2 is a little bit more bulky and I'm really glad that they have improved upon that on the newer models. However, one good thing about the HCS2 having just one presser foot is that you can use it to line up your garments as this machine doesn't currently have a laser pointer you can purchase one as an attachment but for most of my projects if i'm lining something up i do just use that one presser foot and it is fairly accurate just doing it by eye however this issue has been addressed on the newest model the hcs3 which now comes with um, a dedicated crosshair laser on all of their HCS3 models. The HCU also comes with a laser by default. It is the pinpoint laser. You can upgrade this laser to the more accurate crosshair laser, but that does involve sacrificing one of your 15 needles. And I personally would prefer to keep a needle and use the pinpoint laser. But it is just my personal feeling. I would have liked this machine to have had the crosshair laser by default. Fortunately, the HCU has enough interesting features and advantages to make up for my gripe with the laser. Not only do the presser feet have this streamlined shape, they are also digitally adjustable. Whereas on the HCS2, you have to manually adjust the height of that presser foot with a kind of wrench-like screwdriver. And aren't we glad that it only has one presser foot in this case? Examples of when you might need to adjust the height of the presser foot are when you're sewing onto uh, ball caps or just generally thicker materials. You might want to raise the height of the presser foot a little to account for the thickness of that material. On the HCU, the height and the range of the presser foot is adjusted on an individual basis. You can do it for each individual needle. They don't all have to be the same height and you can do that all through the touch screen. And while we're on the subject of embroidering on different materials, the process of swapping the uh, tubular embroidery arms on the HCU is much more streamlined because of these black thumb kind of screws, which are much easier to loosen and tighten than the screws on the tubular frame of the HCS2 that have to be loosened with a screwdriver. It's funny, some things you never realise are an issue. Like I never thought that taking this on and off was any particular headache before until a simpler version comes along. And while more often than not things are improved for the better, there is one little gripe I have between this machine and this machine. And I promise this will be the last thing I mourn about, but the decision to remove the thread guide from this section of the machine is absolutely bizarre. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you what a thread guide is. So on this machine, when the thread comes down, it drops through these holes by here, these guides, and then you just continue on threading up the needle. Whereas on the HCU, they have removed those dedicated holes and the thread just kind of drops behind uh, this, this bar, which has replaced the guide. And on occasion, uh, static electricity uh, between the plastic of the machine and the thread itself will end up with the thread sticking to the plastic and making it rather tricky to drop through for me to continue threading the needle. It's not impossible, but it doesn't happen all the time. When it does happen, it just makes me wonder why they would get rid of the thread guides. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. But while we're on the subject of the threading system, let's look at the difference between the two. 
the door on the HCS tool, which you had to open in order to be able to thread your machine, uh, was a safety feature that they have now removed. A big difference between the HCS2 and the HCSU is that the HCS2 has pretensioners, which the HCSU does not. There's also more threading involved with the HCS2 as there are more holes that you have to lead the thread through. While on the HCU, uh, there are no top tensioners and there aren't as many individual holes that you have to lead the thread through. It's more of just dragging the thread around a circuit. And for any part that I find a little bit fiddly to do, um, using a tweezers helps me. And another difference between the HCS2 and the HCU is that the HCU has thread tubes for each embroidery thread. Um, it does add another stage to the threading process, but I personally find these are very helpful for stopping threads getting tangled at the top of the embroidery machine. If you wind your own bobbins, both machines also come with a built-in bobbin winder. What initially attracted me to the HCS tool was its larger than average sewing field for a machine of its size. The sewing field for the Happy Japan HCS tool is 28 centimetres by 29 centimetres, which means it has a square embroidery hoop that makes the machine quite versatile as it can embroider onto larger projects like jacket backs. Compare that to the sewing field of the Happy Japan HCU, which has a maximum sewing field of 600 millimeters by 400 millimeters. I don't currently own the hoop that large but this is just one of the magnetic hoops that I like to use for this embroidery machine and you can see the difference. There's also a great difference in speed between the two machines. Not just in sewing but in how quickly they can perform needle changes and cut in. I've also brought my brother embroidery machine into the mix here because at the time when I purchased the HCS2, I couldn't get over how much quicker it was in comparison to my brother embroidery machine. And then to truly appreciate just how quick the HCU is when performing uh, color changes and cuts, I just thought it was an interesting comparison to have the three side by side. And here are the machines performing a cut. The HCS2 has a top speed of 1000 stitches per minute, whereas the HCU has a top stitching speed of 1500 stitches per minute. Personally, I never run my embroidery machines that quickly as I live in a residential setting. My embroidery machines only really see speeds of about 900 stitches per minute. One uh, big difference I noticed between the build of the two machines, which came into play particularly as I was embroidering on uh, bulky garments like, uh, like large men's denim jackets, is that there is a gap between the bobbin arm and the pantograph arm on the HCU that the HCS2 does not have. And this is very advantageous to me because it means that the excess material of some of the garments I embroider on, it just sits neatly under the pantograph arm as it moves. There's no need to try and bunch up and collect it and secure it in any way that would, you know, you want to prevent it from jamming in the embroidery machine. Um, it's just a lot easier to do that on this machine than that machine and I think that is basically a benefit of the scale of this machine is that you can embroider on much larger garments on this machine more easily than you can on that machine. You can do the same projects on this machine, I'm just saying it's easier to do it on the larger machine as you would expect as you upgrade. For the longest time I said I'd only ever buy the 12 needle embroidery machine 
just because I was really happy with it and I didn't see the need to bring a huge embroidery machine into my house for my setup because I don't consider my business to be all that big and it just seemed like unnecessarily spending money. But now that I have got it and I have used it, I would never go back to a smaller machine. I absolutely love it. Uh, primarily for the feature I was saying where there's a gap between the sewing arm and the um, pantograph, moving pantograph. I think that is just great. Had I never had access to this machine and I'd never used it, then I would be more than content with the HDS2, HDS3. I think they're fabulous, compact embroidery machines. And for me as a home business, I particularly like the ability to take them upstairs, move them all around the house. And just so like as my business changes, as my home life changes, uh, my embroidery business can adapt around that. I do think with the larger machine, it does have to stay at a fixed point in the house. You can't really move it around. But again, these are all things that are quite personal to me and my business. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you could choose between these two machines, which one would you pick and why? And if you have any further questions about the embroidery machine, stuff you'd like to see demonstrated or any questions, I can't answer too much technical stuff because obviously I'm not a technician, but for just general use on like projects that you'd make yourself, uh, shoot me a message and I will reply to you. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you could support my channel by subscribing to it, then I would really appreciate that. Bye bye.